I want to quit the grid, but I can't quit the grid. I can't quit because at the end of the day, my wife needs a visa. <laughs> and you have to have your shit together to get a spousal visa in this country. I didn't know that. I thought it'd be easy. I was naive. I thought it'd be enough to just get married, just say to the government, hey, look, we're married. Let her in. No, no, this is what you have to do. You have to prove to the government that you're in love. <laughs> kind of Kafka-esque situation, isn't it? Kind of Kafka-esque. And they set the terms. They set the terms, right? They set the terms. So they basically say, right, in order to prove to us that you're in love, you need to send us all of your bank statements, <laughs> yeah, all of your holiday photos, and genuinely, all of your WhatsApp conversations <laughs> to the government. Yeah, let me tell you something. Me and my wife's WhatsApp conversations would never imply that we're in love, okay? <laughs> She called me a paedophile on our wedding day. <laughs> it is relentless, it is bureaucratic. Form after form after form, 10 grand in the hole, and they tear you apart. They tear you apart. It's the most invasive thing that's ever happened to me, and I almost got a cavity search at Alton Towers, don't ask, okay? <laughs> and here's the thing, right, here's the thing, and I, um, Actually, I, always, I, I would like to ask you something about it. Is it. Has anyone here ever gone through this? Has anyone here ever tried to get a spousal visa? Oh, you have. Hi. What's your name? Vic. Vic. How are you doing, Vic? Um, were you the... Uh, no. Brit? Um, I'm the Brit. He's the American. He's the American. Hey, how are you doing? What's your name, sir? Tim. Tim. Good to have you, Tim. Tim and Vic. Vic, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> Not as much camaraderie in the room as I hoped. Um, and so you were the Brit. Because I've got... I, there's a bit in this. I always have to ask people, because people don't believe me when I say this. Did you have to write love letters to the government? <laughs> I thought I was being fobbed off. Like, <laughs> genuinely, people don't believe this. As, as the Brit, as the native, I had to write, effectively, a series of love letters to the government about how much I love my wife. Oh. About, yeah, about how much I need it. I'd basically prove it wasn't a sham marriage with the written word, yeah? yeah. My wife, she was very worried about this part. <laughs> she kept saying to me, Sean, just don't mess around on this. Just follow the template that they've given. And I was like, babe, the template's in the bin, okay? I'm an artist. <laughs> I think I know how to write about love. Like, I don't know about you, Vic, but I think love's about what you don't say. So you give me the same look that she get. Like, you know what I mean, though? It's complicated love. It's complicated feelings. You know, it's a grey area. It's reading between the lines, the way Hemingway wrote it. Right, look. I've got my letter to the government right here. I'm going to read it to you now. Sums up everything I feel about my wife. Yeah, just to let you know in advance, there's not going to be a dry eye in the house. All right? All right. <clears throat> I write concerning my beloved. <laughs> At dusk, she fries haddock. <laughs> the memory of my dog fades. <laughs> and that's love. I mean, that's love. <laughs> And if they can't, if they can't see that's love, that's on them, that's not on me. <laughs> form after form after form. 10 grand it costs, 10 grand, just to apply. And they never tell you how well you're doing. And they don't give you the money back if you don't get in. It's not a deposit. <laughs> and we never know how well we're doing. We never know. Our entire life, we could be torn apart with, by the bureaucracy at any point. And then finally, we get the call we've been waiting for, me and my wife, meeting me and her with an immigration officer in Croydon, <laughs> as if we haven't suffered enough. <laughs> and the woman, the woman we met was really nice. She was a really nice lady. She was really nice. And she said this. She can say, "Look, I know it's, a, I know it's hard. I know it's frustrating. But you have to look at it from our point of view. We're the British government, and we're just trying to stop sham marriages." And at this, my wife actually spoke up. She said, "Can I just ask, what do you mean by sham marriage? We keep hearing this phrase, sham marriage. What is a sham marriage?" And the woman said. Well, a sham marriage would be like, for example, you two got married just so she could stay in the country. <laughs> so we're in a sham marriage. Like, I'm in a sham marriage. That is absolutely what we did. I'm in a sham marriage. How do you feel? I'm in a sham marriage. Is that, is it weird now I'm in a sham? Does anyone here work for the home office? Is anyone here? <laughs> Because if you do, 
I've got two things to say to you. One, I love my wife, all right? I love my wife, and she likes me. The day I met my wife was the happiest day of my life, without exception, okay? And I want to stand next to Ian Beale on a coach. So, <laughs> the love is real. The love is real. The marriage is a sham. Of course it is. Grow up. But the love is real. But the second thing I'd say to you is this. I don't think sham marriages are an issue. I genuinely don't. I don't think sham marriage is an issue. I think sham marriages are just a natural byproduct of the system we live in, whereby if you marry someone from another country, they get into the country. We all accept that, of course. If you marry someone from somewhere else, they should be allowed in, of course. But we also say, well, we need logical immigration policy in Britain. Well, which is it? Which one are we going to do? Is it going to be love or is it going to be logic? It can't be both. It can't. My wife has exclusive access to my knob. And now she gets to see Big Ben. Where is the logic there? Where is the logic? Like, I'll put it this way, I'll put it this way. My wife got it. My wife got her visa about four months ago. One of the happiest days. I couldn't believe how happy I was. She immediately told me she wanted an open relationship. I'm choosing to ignore that. Okay. <laughs> But I was happy, I was happy because I love her. That's why I was happy. But if you want me to lose that love, if you want me to turn the love off, turn off that emotional side and look at us purely through logic, genuinely, I don't say this lightly, why should she get in? <laughs> why should she get in? I'd never say this in front of my wife, but genuinely, she brings nothing to this country. She brings nothing. She has no skills. She's not even particularly nice, if I'm honest. <laughs> it's not like she's some Anglophile who loves our culture, but we're watching Peaky Blinders at the moment, right? She thinks it was set in the 1980s, so she doesn't get it. <laughs> but she gets in. She gets in straight away. Why? Because we love each other. But you love each other, so she must get in, and that's really nice, but it's, it's weird. It's, you can't get into a nightclub because you're in love with someone in there, you know? <laughs> and I've tried. <laughs> You've got to let me in, mate. I'm in love with Fatboy Slim. 